secret of existence and the power of women have been suppressed by the church. I'm going to reveal what they don't want you to know. The Gospel of Mary Magdalene is a Gnostic Gospel. She is a most prominent disciple and a teacher of divine wisdom. She explains that all of humanity is divine and that we can rise above the illusion of the material world by overcoming ignorance. The church considered these beliefs heretical and they spent decades systematically abusing the Gnostics until they were forced into silence. But the Gnostics never really went away and they still exist today in anyone who has any interest in spirituality, philosophy or mystical teachings. The Gospel of Mary Magdalene is an important text to a group of Christians called Gnostics. The word Gnostic is derived from the Greek word for knowledge and the Gnostic Christians claim to know hidden knowledge and the real teachings of Jesus Christ. So who was Mary Magdalene and what was the secret of reality that Jesus told her? And why did the church consider this knowledge to be evil? Mary Magdalene was described as an intimate companion of Jesus Christ. She was the only disciple who was able to reach enlightenment through her interpretation of Jesus' teachings. In an additional banned gospel, the Gospel of Philip, she is described as Christ's closest companion, whom he loved the most and the one who he kissed on the mouth. And what Jesus revealed to Mary is shocking. It reveals that reality is not at all what it seems and that the universe itself can be conquered. More on that later. Mary tried to tell the other disciples the secret that Christ had revealed to her, but the disciples Peter and his brother Andrew demean her for being a woman and the preferred apostle of Jesus Christ. History suggests that the church wanted to play down the role that women have in spirituality to create a patriarchal religion. This can be seen in the Bible where it says that women are not allowed to teach, that they must remain quiet, that they are lesser than men and that they must submit to their husbands in marriage. They are held responsible for committing the first sin and eating from the tree of knowledge and it states that they can save themselves through childbirth. But the Gnostics had different ideas. They wanted to draw attention to the critical importance of women. They are given godlike status and shown great honour and respect. In fact, Jesus is often depicted as the manifestation of the female deity Sophia, which translates into divine wisdom. There are many more examples in Gnosticism, like Barbello, who is the supreme feminine principle of existence, Eve, who brought the power of intuition and higher consciousness to humanity, and Eve's forgotten daughter, Nerea, who defeated Yaldabaoth. Mary Magdalene is no exception. She is the most important of all the apostles and Jesus loved her deeply and revealed the secrets of existence to her. In early Christianity, there was a struggle between those who wanted to focus on men and those who wanted a balance of male and female representation in the Bible. This conflict came to a climax in 325 CE at the Council of Nicaea where a group of bishops decided how Christianity should be taught to the masses and it decided that Christianity would be firmly patriarchal. The church then had all other perspectives that conflicted with theirs destroyed. Not only did the destruction of these texts prevent the teaching of feminine Gnosticism but it also destroyed their secret teachings on the nature of reality including the teachings Jesus told to Mary Magdalene but Luckily, we know parts of what Jesus revealed to Mary, since the remains of many Gnostic texts were found in 1945, hidden in the tombs of Egypt. So what exactly does the Gospel of Mary Magdalene say, and what did Jesus tell her? The Gospel of Mary begins with the disciples asking Jesus if the material world will be destroyed. Cryptically, Jesus replies that all matter, all nature, and all creatures are connected as one and all things will be returned to where they originated. Jesus then leaves, departing the disciples for good and the disciples start weeping because they don't know how to continue without him. But Mary stands up and comforts them, taking a leadership position and tells them not to weep. Here she is beginning to take the place of Jesus in his absence. This is important and we'll come back to it in a minute.
One of the disciples, Peter, asked Mary to tell them the secret knowledge that Jesus revealed to her. And she starts teaching them about the nature of reality. Mary tells them mind, not matter, is the true nature of reality and that mind is the key to existence. Mary begins to describe the hidden levels of reality that exist beyond the material world. She discusses the journey that the soul must take to transcend and explains that this must be done by defeating ignorance. The soul is even called the slayer of matter and conqueror of space. Because we have other Gnostic Gospels, we know that they believe that all of us are divine. They believe that the material world was an illusion and a prison for the soul that must be transcended and that ignorance keeps us from recognising our own divine nature. This was one of the Gnostic's great secrets that the church considered a heresy. Why? Because when you're trying to control a population, the last thing you want them to believe is that they are all-knowing and all-powerful. The Gnostics did not rely on blind faith but prioritise knowledge and what they called epinoia, which means critical thinking or intuition. They believe that this was crucial for realising who we truly are. The church teaches that you are flawed and sinful and that you need saving. The Gnostics believed that you can be your own saviour by realising your own divinity through the power of your own mind. And not only does the Gospel of Mary Magdalene reveal the secret of existence, but the gospel itself is a code. Let me explain. Orthodoxy hadn't been established yet, and early Christianity was divided about what Christianity actually was. The Gnostics liked writing in code and metaphors. I believe that the disciples represent what would ultimately become the different denominations of Christianity, with each male disciple representing a traditional patriarchal form of Christianity and Mary Magdalene representing the feminine Gnostic version of Christianity. The Gospel says, Peter, you have always been hot-tempered. Now I see you contending against women like the advisories. But if the Saviour made her worthy, who are you indeed to reject her? Surely the Saviour knows her very well. This is why he loved her more than us. The disciple that condemns Mary, Peter, represents what would ultimately become the modern church. Remember that the Gospel of Mary Magdalene begins with Jesus teaching the disciples, but when Jesus leaves, they don't know what to do. What does Mary do? She steps up as a leader, comforts them, and takes up the role of new teacher who reveals secrets of the universe. In other words, she's the successor of Jesus. Mary is presented as the only one who truly understood his teachings. What this story is trying to convey is that Gnosticism should be the true version of Christianity. We see this when Peter defies Mary, calling her a liar, which matches up with the church's fear and hatred of the feminine. We see this struggle played out in the world today. A lot of problems are caused by the suppression of the feminine. We need to remember that the feminine perspective is powerful and important and it needs to be integrated into our collective consciousness.